Hi, Steve Gamash here with another Chef Knives to Go Quick Look product review. And in this version, we are looking at the Tanaka Blue Number no. 2 Damascus Yuto 240mm knife. This line of knives has a core steel of Aogami or Blue Paper Number no. 2 uh, Reactive Carbon Hitachi steel. And uh, the heat rate rating is about 60, 61 Rockwell on that core steel. The construction on this line is. A Damascus iron cladding, so <clears throat> a layered iron reactive cladding over the top of that core steel. So both the core steel and the cladding are reactive. This is there's no stainless anywhere on this knife. The weight on the knife is 185 grams, about six and a half ounces. The weights and dimensions will vary just a little bit from knife to knife, so some variation is expected. This particular one has a blade length of around uh, 245 on the edge, 245 millimeter, and the overall length about 15.6 millimeter for the whole blade. This knife has a thickness of about 3 millimeters on the, the blade itself at the top of the spine here, right above the chin or the back of the heel, and it thins out a little bit beyond that and then carries a fair amount of that, maybe around 2-ish or so, 2.5 millimeter, pretty much till you hit the grind of the knife. So it's got a little bit of backbone to this one. The blade height is uh, about 51.6 millimeter on this particular sample. Again, that'll vary a little bit from knife to knife. And the handle is a no frills, uh, D-shaped buffalo horn, uh, hoewood uh, knife, buffalo horn ferrule, hoewood main part of the handle. There's There can be a little bit of a step here between the wood and the ferrule sometimes. That'll vary from handle to handle. You could sand these down pretty easily if you wanted to do that and also seal them with mineral oil or tongue oil or some other kind of sealant if you want to, because the, the wood itself is fairly porous and it's very, very light handle. The circumference is about 78 millimeters or 3.1 inches right here where the ferrule and wood meet. And uh, let's take a close-up look at this knife. So, as you can tell, the blade is uh, pretty heavily chiseled with the kanji. It's got a really nice, uh, nicely done kanji and it's very obvious and it's got a nice texture to it. It's really, it adds to the style of the knife. The uh, cladding layers, you can see, it's kind of a muted effect, but they're definitely there. This knife has some patina on it because I've been playing with it, getting a feel for this particular one. So there you can see some patina in in here from cutting a few different things. And it's, uh, there's, easily see some of the patina going on here as well, but it's pretty easy to tell where the core steel and the cladding come in to meet there and where the core steel is exposed at the edge. You've got some embossed kanji on the other side. So on the left side of the blade you have that and the right side of the blade of course you've got the uh, hand chiseled kanji as well. The fit and finish is actually quite good on this blade. The uh, spine is relieved just a bit as is the back of the blade, the choil into the neck or emoto. And uh, so it's really ready to go out of the box from that perspective. The uh, out of the box edge will give this particular one a five out of ten. These can vary a little bit from knife to knife. Um, I did go ahead and sharpen it, and boy, did these things these things really want to get sharp. These Hitachi uh, carbon steels are just awesome, as are you know a ton of different types of carbon steels. But uh, this Aogami just sharpens up so well, and just wants to get super super sharp. And so it sharpened up in no time flat. Put a nice little edge bevel on it, and it really does help move through product, especially in a knife like this, it's not a true laser, to have a nice sharp edge. It just gives you that advantage when cutting and increases the performance over a knife that's not as sharp. Um, the convexing on these is really well done. It's quite thin at the edge, but not super thin. And you can just feel the nice job they did grinding the knife as you go from spine down to the edge. And what that does is makes this knife move quite well through product. And the tip actually works quite well through softer product, even though it's not super, super skinny and there's not a ton of distal taper, this knife does have some nice backbone to it. So it's got some stiffness to the blade, yet it's a really good performer, and uh, it's just a really good all-around knife. Let's take a look at the balance point. So for me, the balance point is right about there, and this is a little in front of a pinch grip, but it does have a very, very light handle. That gives you a little bit of added mass to the blade, some weight forward uh, bias to the balance. And uh, let's take a look at this one on a cutting board. So what you've got here is kind of a gentle arc or curve or belly to the knife. There's not a lot of flat spot on it. This is not a, you know, a push cutter chopper style 
knife. It's a bit more of a rocker style knife, kind of a general purpose knife. If you like some flat for techniques you use, this may not be the knife you like. It does have a little bit of flat on it, but as I said, not a lot. It doesn't have a particularly aggressive belly. Um, I can get right about there before I hit the tip end of the cutting board in this particular one. And again, that could vary knife to knife. It does flow very nicely on the board for rock cutting or general pull, glide cutting, those type, those type of tasks. Pure push cutter, not so much. But it's a very pleasurable knife to use. It's, uh, I'd categorize it in a, I, I guess it's, it's really throwing a bot a lot, but I'd categorize it as a workhorse knife. So it's got some thickness to the spine. It's uh, pretty thin behind the edge. It's not super skinny behind the get edge, so it's got a little robustness. The steel's not super hard. Um, it's just a really good, solid performing knife that does a lot of things very well. And um, I think it's a good value for the money. So again, it's all reactive, so you have to that has to be something you want. But I, I thought this knife really did a, a great job. So there you have a just kind of an old standby, uh, highly recommended knife that's been recommended a long time on Chef Knives to Go for a very good reason. So we have the Tanaka Aogami or Blue Paper Number no. Two Damascus Yuto 240 millimeter knife.